Now, wouldn't you love to stop wasting money and time on Google? And I think that's what's happened in our society now. I mean, Google's great, it's handling all the data, but it's also a business and trying to earn money. And because of that, you know, it gets money from you that you don't have to give it. Yeah. You know, and, and so that's why I think so many people are wasting their time because they get 50 million websites for a problem. Like if you're trying to get money to pay your bills or something like that, you're going to get all these people are going to sell you something. Either sell you money and a loan or something like that, or sell you, you know, magic that's going to help you do this for some reason. And you'll never find the people that will help you for free. The people that are giving out money for free. The people that'll sit down with you for free and help you find, deal with that credit problem you have or you have to pay your bills. See, there are people who do that for free, but you'll never find them in Google. Mainly because there are, you know, like a billion websites on Google. So when you go on there, you're going to get hundreds of 50 million websites on your topic. And you'll never find those free ones because everybody in the front of your research are people who want to sell you something because they figure out how to get on the front pages of your search. And the people giving things for free who don't have marketing money to figure that out, you're never going to see. You know, and so what happens to me, is, what hurts me is that I feel people think, oh, there's no help for me. And the only way to solve my problem is to spend money. That's wrong. You know, and you have to learn about that. So if you don't believe that there is free help, you'll never hang in there long enough. And if you hang in there long enough, it's probably take you 20 years to find the thing. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do is show people. I mean, uh, the, I have uh, video eBooks. You know, they're really video tutorials on subjects, getting a job, starting a business, or, or paying your bills that show you the websites and how to get to the websites, where they are on the internet, so you could apply right away. But even if, if you don't use my, you know, video ebooks, you know, still believe it's there. It's going to take you a lot longer, but the stuff is there. And it's usually, you know, it's not a dot com. It's going to be a dot gov, a dot org, nonprofit organizations, government offices, and things like that that aren't going to take your money. Uh, and, and that's the thing. But they are never going to advertise to tell you about those free things. And I spend a lifetime trying to show people how to get the free things, how to get those options, because that's what will keep you going ahead in life, knowing that there's a way to do something you don't have to spend money to do because then you can do more things in life and you know accomplish more things and give more things in life so remember even if you don't use my stuff the stuff is out there it's just going to take work okay you've probably heard of the shared economy right <laughs> and that's what's making our whole life more efficient because we're sharing things we don't need you know, uh, sort of like oh, we share rooms in our house that we don't use and we put them on Airbnb. You know, now there's there's applications where you could share your your garage you're not using and people will pay you money to use it one day a week or something like that. Or, or even your car or your clothes, everything is called the shared economy. Yeah. And so they don't have to go out and buy new stuff. You need tools just for the day. Yeah, you don't want to go out and invest a thousand dollars in this tool. There's websites now we'll show you how to get them for the day for a very reasonable uh, um, cost so you're making money by lending into somebody else golf clubs or tools or whatever and they're making money and saving money by not having the them. but yet now somebody's found a way to do that with the internet <laughs> you don't use all your internet do you <laughs> you get it all the time and you're not using it at all well just think if you could make money with the internet you're not using <laughs> <laughs> and that's what this interview is. And this fellow, <laughs> they figured out a way to do this, you know. And, and so when there are companies now that, um, you know, internet suppliers that, it, it, you know, you agree when you pay for their internet, you any excess any excess excess internet capacity that you're not using, other people could use, you know, for free. And what happens now is that you become able to use this anywhere in the world. See, they're all over the world. So you'll see this interview said you can walk down Paris and see all this free internet that's available 
<laughs> every block almost, because people who have the internet are sharing with other people who don't have it. And so then they're able to use the internet anywhere else too. So it's a sharing cooperative of excess internet because we don't use it all. I mean, it's sort of like your air conditioning, you know, you have all this air conditioning you're doing, you don't use it all. Well, just think if you can make extra money and people take that block of air over here that's cool and use it somewhere else. So that's the sharing economy. And that's what it's about. That's why your whole life is changing. And the internet has done that. Without the internet, we couldn't do that. You know, and there's more and more things. People are dreaming up ways to do this and change your life and never be the same again. You know? <laughs> and then I keep an eye on it. Another neat application too is that um, for coffee shops and small businesses, you know, he'll give them internet access, but you also have a way to find out about the people using it. So he says like a dentist's office, people come in and use their uh, uh, Wi-Fi or something and you're, well, they use, this service where they have to sign in, but you get information about the customers you have and when their needs and what they want and then offer them special stuff. What a great way. Instead of just giving somebody a, um, you know, an 18 digit passcode or something to get onto your internet. No, you log in with your Facebook account or whatever it is and, and see, but you as the small business offering this, you get that data too, to share it, to make business decisions about it. You know, I mean, that's what you do to, if you have a, a Facebook site, you're giving all that information to Facebook for free, right? You're giving all that information when you put a Google email account in, you know, and they're using it. So instead of getting a separate code, you know, to use it free, if, if you sign in, you know, when you go to the next coffee shop, then they got to do it. See, there's so many neat creative ways to live now. So watch this and see what's coming down the street because it's gonna go right by you if you don't pay attention. Well, Alex Prager, well, yeah, I don't think anybody's going to spell that right after hearing me say it, but it's easy to find you, F-O-N dot com. <laughs> That's easy as hell. And you're over at Spainment for the creating opportunities for everybody in the world to have Wi-Fi everywhere. <laughs> and because we have wasted Wi-Fi, you're really the ultimate of the sharing economy, right? So people who have Wi-Fi, they're not using it. They could have it for somebody else who can't get it or doesn't have money for it. And, 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 and I mean, it's a beautiful concept. Why don't you wear a robe and be a priest or something like this? <laughs> we have, we have, we have a, obviously a bit of a, a gene of sharing and a gene <laughs> of helping people. So uh, I, I don't think we need a priest's robe, but uh, we, we're, <laughs> I'm happy and satisfied with satisfied customers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a bunch of your customers aren't even pay, paying. You know, so it's really, you, you're tied in with a lot of the providers who drive internet access all over the world, you know, big telecom companies kind of thing, right? And, and they hook you onto their service where the people, you know, the stuff they're not using, you, you as a customer are getting priority to use the service, but what you're not, it's going out to other people who could use it for free, right? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, basically what we did is, and when we started 10 years ago, it's, yeah. it was, I'd say it was a pioneer of the sharing economy. We didn't know the word back then. <laughs> it came afterwards and suddenly we're like, yeah, so the definition is pretty good for us as well. But it's not so much sharing, it's kind of like sharing, air condition, right? It's like right. you share, but you don't give anything up. And who would, who minds if somebody enjoys the same temperature in a exactly. cafe or at your home uh, when 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 you're hot and you have the AC on? It's the same thing with Wi-Fi. Basically, what we say is, look, you share your Wi-Fi, you don't give anything up. You share it with people when you don't use it. When you do use it, we do prioritize your own traffic. Wow. I said the idea is to get internet access to the people who want to get internet access when they don't have it. That could be sometimes faster then our internet access could be cheaper, more affordable, free, uh, and could just be available. Right. Sometimes it's not available. Well, that's a, but more importantly, man, if I'm in your group, you know, and I give my extra, <laughs> you know, Wi-Fi I'm not using for other people to use, I could then go anywhere in the world practically and use Wi-Fi for free because now I'm a member, right? <laughs> and I gave at the country club or whatever the heck it is. Yeah. 
You share a little bit and you gain a lot. <laughs> it comes back to you, right? This isn't just all one way, right? It's you getting the stuff back. Exactly. It's refreshing when we get emails as well from, from our customers, from people that, you know, that go from the US, go to Italy and say, wow. That was <laughs> <laughs> I, well, right. I was just in Spain, right? And, 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 and they're right. Then that would have been great for me, right? <laughs> I mean, look. It depends as well on we, we have this number of uh, 19 million that, that's it's a hard number to grasp right in the, in the oh. age of but when you walk through the street of Paris and you look for a phone signal you would know what it means it wow means no every kidding. second household wow every second block that you walk by you find a phone signal wow and you don't even have to know how to speak French to do it, right? No, no, no. <laughs> as well, but it helps. So if the snobby French won't help you, it doesn't matter. You got it right there. <laughs> no, actually, what will help you is we have connection managers on your on the phone, so you connect automatically. So basically, you tap on your phone and just connect seamlessly. Well, another thing what's interesting, your other service you tell me about that help small business with customers like coffee shops or whatever that that are, you know, people come in and use the internet. So if they're using yours. The, the small business could keep track and, and get data about their uh, people they're using there, and, and, and that becomes a valuable asset. It's the same idea. The idea is that Wi-Fi, the way Wi-Fi is configured, has been configured, is stupid. Right? <laughs> it's like you get a password, and the password is for yourself, and ideally it has 17 digits, and you never know it, you can't share it. Right. Yes. Right? So as an individual, you're okay to share. As a shop owner, you're even more okay to share. Wow, you yes. Well, you want, maybe you want to make it a little bit easier than, you know, here's my 17 digits password. Right. You want them to log in with Facebook, with Google, with whatever they want to log in. And then you want to, as a shop owner, you want to maybe find out a little bit about your customer. You know? Well, it's easy to satisfy them. I mean, you, you got to know, you know. And you give everybody access, and it's a bit of a give and take, and then you know you can show your customers what you want them to show. Right. right. So ba basically, let's put it this way: what we what we do is we take the large coffee shop experience, mm -hmm. like a Starbucks, to the small coffee shops who can't really run a uh, IT department. Right. Right, so we, we we take that experience, we improve it a little bit because we've been doing Wi-Fi for a long time, <laughs> and we make it very easy for the shop owner to customize his experience to find something out about customers and for the customers to log out. Uh, no, it's brilliant. You know, and coffee shops are popping up like mushrooms, man, all, all over. And non-big ones, too. I mean, you uh, know... It's not just coffee shops. It's dentists. It's car mechanics. Oh, right. Yes, everybody wants Wi-Fi. Everybody who wants... It was somebody to walk through the door and sit there as a customer and say, how do I connect? Oh, that's me, boy, because I, 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 I could work anywhere and I'd rather be somewhere else than home doing it. So. <laughs> you watch your, do you want to watch your Netflix videos? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm more greedy than that. I just want to work. I want to do something. <laughs> well, I, I think it's a wonderful and genius thing you're doing and, and your heart must feel good because you're helping people too and, and using, you know, you know, capitalism to do good. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> We, we've could, been on the right side of the capitalism. Yeah, what could be happy. better than that? You're not asking for donations. You're you're giving donations. So it's f o n dot com, and you can go there to see if it's in your neighborhood soon, right? That's right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> definitely working on it. Great. Thank you, Alex. Take care. Well, I believe that the internet is probably the only place in the world where you could take ten dollar investment. <laughs> that's ten dollars and within four years turn it into something that's generating like seventy eighty thousand dollars a year for you <laughs> god where are you going to get a you know a job like that or or a college degree that could do that no it's the internet this is what this interview is all about this young woman actually she got a degree in microbiology <laughs> but she liked making jewelry like from victoria era you know, and she's upstate in the middle of nowhere in the state of Maine. <laughs> and she goes on the internet, starts with like just $10 worth of equipment on how to make jewelry. She starts making it, puts on one of these platforms, you know, that generates income and sales for her, you know. And sure, it took some time, you know. And, but in four years, when she got really serious at this stuff now, man, where's she else going to make $80,000 or so doing something like this? And the investment only. 
ten dollars man that's why it, it is just remarkable i think what's going on in the world now you know uh, and that's because you know businesses are closing you know these big stores the all the traditional ways of doing things are closing you listen to her people are calling her because they want special stuff she want they want different stuff than they're going to get in these big department stores or big box stores a lot of retail men and shopping malls are sl closing down Sure, they're not going to go away overnight, but this is what's growing in our country. You, me, and other individuals just making things right at home for people. I mean, she gets calls from people at yeah, <laughs> wedding parties that want special little necklaces or, or choke collars or whatever you call these things. <laughs> I don't even know. Actually, there's one she does that has a bow tie for women. You know, a little choke collar thing, you know, with uh, fabric, you know, with, with a bow tie on. I said, I can get that for my wife so we can both go out and wear bow ties. <laughs> But it's so exciting that what can happen and how you could change your life. She's now, now I've got a, a son that's three years old, so she's able to have time. Sure, she's working like heck. Sure, it takes some time order, but then she has control over time. The son needs her, you know, in the middle of the day running. She's flexible because she has control over time. Nobody else has control over her. So watch her, watch and learn how she do it. So you could maybe think about doing this too. Well, Lindsay Veal. Veal? Yeah. Veal. <laughs> and more importantly, it's the website, Arthlin, A R T H L I N, if you're dumb like me and don't know how to spell, <laughs> dot com. And we find your wonderful Victorian inspired jewelry that you've been making. And you were telling me for another, God, you were a bio biology or microbiology scientists before you got into this so anybody could change their life if they want to right with the internet <laughs> wow and so you just get inspired like the chokers and the necklace you're wearing right and, and you have a whole line of this and man you said like your first month you made 25 dollars and, and now you're up to six seven thousand dollars a month <laughs> Who needs a microbiology job when you can do this, right? As long as you have fun, uh, I think anyone who has a passion who puts their heart into it. And with internet now, you can just share it with the world. And Wow, that's amazing. And you do custom work too, and that must be nice. I mean, it sounds like people getting married call you up and they want certain kind of color chokers or jewelry that you just do and to help people's lives so much and you know maybe you weren't going to be the woman who cure cancer but now you can make everybody happy <laughs> i do in a way make people happy uh, i have a customer oh i need to tell you about this he he supported me from the beginning and every week he would purchase a custom piece that he would give me the ideas for his wife and take her on a date oh kitty Wow, no kidding. So he's going to take it out for his wife. So you're you're enriching that marriage and that relationship just by <laughs> what you love to do. So you're sharing your love so other people could love better. Right, in a way, yeah, for sure. So you're in the love business. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, around Valentine's Day, I do get a lot of orders from... You know, I was reading that people are doing pop-up stores now, like your stuff. And what was a neat idea, they're putting pop-up stores like in bars at happy hour on Valentine's Day. So all these men out there drinking all night, then they come over and they, they buy, buy jewelry yeah, <laughs> to go home, you know, uh, to their family or lovers or, or whatever they have. And, and then the bars like it because you're an activity, you know, if you have something to take. <laughs> so it's another way to, to get retail without having to be retail. Right. But it's a lot of work, though. I'd rather selling online. And that's... Yeah. <laughs> you can be in your pajamas and sell, right? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> but more importantly, you have a three-year-old boy, and so your work is flexible. Your day is flexible, right? If anything comes up, you know, with the child. Oh, yes. That, and that is important, you know, especially... These days, these past few weeks, we've been sick a lot, so we can be at home. It's nice. Yeah, the change of the weather, I guess, causes a lot of people. I know I, I hate the change of the weather. Well, you're up in the middle of Maine, so you must be still winter up there, but <laughs> we're trying to get to spring. It's not working too well, but.
<laughs> we're trying. Wow. So what's in the future do you see? I mean, do you see, do you want to get into more retail stores or what do you think is going to happen? Uh, well, it sure it does get me dreaming sometimes. I wonder where will I be in five, ten years. Uh, I hope I can do this for a long time because it really makes me happy. Uh, I guess I would dream of having a small office somewhere with a little team some days. Uh, ah, right. Well, uh, sometimes you get inspired by other people being around. Yeah, things like that. But maybe you should start a virtual office. You know, and particularly when your kids are still around the house, maybe you don't want to go too far anyway. Uh, but that's, uh, I think, God, you could just be creative. And you design all this stuff yourself or from your customers who help give you ideas, huh? Right. Uh, wow. Did you do this as a kid or what? I started as a teen. Really? No kidding. And, and what was your favorite item back then? Excuse me, it cut. I'm back as a teen, yeah. Oh, uh, I started with the lace jewelry. I was wearing those uncomfortable corset and I really love that fashion. You know what I love of yours? The bow ties with, with the collar choker with a bow tie on it. Man, that, <laughs> see, I wear bow ties all the time. See, so <laughs> I love that idea. Uh, so, I mean, that's a, you know, that's interesting. See, what I could do is get one of those for my wife. So when I go out, I have a bow tie and she'll have a bow tie. Thank you. Yeah, this is a female version, a more female version. Sexier than mine. <laughs> That's all I like about chokers. I think it's really a piece of jewelry that is sexy, unlike others. Yes, they are. I don't know if it's sort of like SM stuff that plays in your mind or what, but it, it is it is sexy sexy material. Is it? Do you do any men's jewelry at all? Uh, I have a couple of pieces that are unisex, but I, I'm I focus on pieces for. Well, uh, it's, I'm sure it's a bigger market <laughs> and you get more fun with it. <laughs> I'm more inspired by it. So you've been at it really pretty full time for four years and that's after starting with $25 and going up to six, $7,000 a month. That's wonderful. And I guess it doesn't take a lot of money to start, does it? No, I started with a $10 jewelry kit, really cheap tools. Uh, <laughs> Ten dollar jewelry kit. Here you are. Yeah, making almost a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's wonderful. Well, you're an inspiration. Thank you so much. Realize, man, you take your passion, you throw it on the table, and you let people know about it. Yeah, and and now you could do that on the internet, can't you? And I hope I can do it for a long time. People have been. Um, it'll change a little probably. I mean, I'm an old guy and I see things change, but I'm still doing what I love and just a little different format. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great time to be alive and to be an artist. To be a More artists, I think, now than ever before. And retail shops are closing because I could get special stuff from you personally instead of going into some big department store and getting stuff that gazillion people are getting. huh? Right, people like having the, the unique piece and not, you'll not see someone else wearing on the street. Exactly, that's wonderful. Well, that's wonderful. So it's Arthlin, A-R-T-H-L-I-N.com. And you'll see Lindsay there and all her wonderful stuff and even the bow tie choker. Get one of those for everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. And I think this next interview you see, I mean, it, it just epitomizes to me what the power of the internet really is and what's going on in our society. I come up with a new phrase in my head called, uh, the internet makes it possible now for everybody to be a store. You know? And this story of this couple, you know, is remarkable how, because it, it just shows you what's going on. I mean, big stores are closing, Walmart's closing stores, you know, Target, everybody is closing down. Retail, people aren't going to the malls, malls are closing. And, and now, see, people want things differently. And there's a chance to give things differently because you don't need, you know, to put to get your product in Walmart, you have to sell a million a day, right? So Walmart's not going to put your product in there unless you could sell a million a day. And, and that's very few products that are that way even though the store's full of gazillion things, you know. And now here's a couple, they were both craftsmen, they're woodworkers, things like that, re redoing houses and whatever, and, and all the lacquer, all the paints, all the varnishes, all the uh, uh, enamels, and all this kind of stuff was making them sick. 
I mean, really causing cancer, causing diseases in their lungs and things like that. And they had to stop. They had to stop doing that. And then they did research and said, hey, what's making me sick from this? And it was the stuff in those chemicals that when you paint it on, you think after it dries, those chemicals are gone, but they're not. They're still there. And that's why more and more people are figuring this out. And so actually what they, by accident, they have three dogs and they're at the vet one day and they found out the dog was eating their bowl, you know, that's on a raised bowl on a little piece of wood and things like that. Eating that, it was making the dog sick. And they said, the vet said, there's so many dogs that get sick from that and from all the paint that's on the wood and stuff like that. So what they did their research and found out how to get coverings, you know, I mean, uh, enamel coverings or, or, you know, to paint the wood, uh, to make it nice in different colors with non-toxic materials. And that's what they have a business in doing now. They're doing it out of their home. And every bowl, everything they do is handmade by the two of them. That's all. They've only been at it for two years doing this. They had to give up their other job. There was no alternative except die. That was their alternative. They kept doing it because for some reason they were getting sick from all that stuff. Maybe it didn't happen to everybody, but it's there. So it happens in different degrees. Some people put up with it and some people can't put up with it. So that's what happened to them. And see, without the power of the internet, with them going on, you know, and starting a store on Amazon or whatever for nothing, figuring, doing the research on how to make these things, they love making stuff anyway, so they're making little bowls, and they, they did all the research about how to finish off the wood so it's non-toxic. And now they got these eco-friendly things. And you, you listen to, watch the interview, how they get the joy out of doing one-on-one -on -one with customers. Other customers really become like family, you know, and they can't wait to get the product. And they give products away too. If you get a product damaged, they tell the customer, just give it to your, you know, uh, shelter, animal shelter, whatever, and we'll send you a new one. So you can't do that working for a big company. They wouldn't let you do that, right? <laughs> Get back here. We're going to do that. No. And that's what's cool. And that's what's cool, I think, in our society now. Everybody could have a store. Everybody is a store. Because people like Amazon make it easier for customers to find you. They handle all the, uh, you know, marketing. They hand you all the, it costs nothing. The credit card stuff you got to figure out. No, it's all figured out for you. So it's easier than ever to start a store. And there's so much more need now for individual little stores, not big bonanza gazillion dollar stores, little ones that help people that can grow bigger and bigger. So watch this. Well, Gary and Ingrid Fair, and you don't <laughs> spell it like fair trade, you spell it F-E-H-R, right? But who cares about that? Your website is easier than your last name, actually. Ofto, O-F-T-O dot U-S. And that's where you find <laughs> dog bowls made out of genuine wood products, handmade in the U.S. with your blood, sweat, and tears. But more importantly, man, you discover how dogs and humans are getting sick from the paint and the lacquer and all that kind of stuff. And you personally, both of you, were getting sick like that. So you're making environmentally friendly stuff where your dog's going to live longer, you're going to live longer, and a happier life just by buying a dog bowl. <laughs> That's terrific. I mean, your story is just ingenious. And, and as I mentioned before, I mean, it, it's remarkable how, see, Walmart would never do something like this because they couldn't see a market of telling, selling 10 million products a day or something. And so yes. you're making a nice business for yourself and your family by just having a bunch of customers online who appreciate what you're doing. <laughs> That's exactly it. And then it's just the pair of us. So if we can't get it done, it has to wait till we get it done. <laughs> You're like my kids. They say the same thing. I'll get it done, Dad. <laughs> but it, it, to me, what's so great about what's happening in craftsmen like you now, we're becoming a craftsman society. I mean, we're getting something better made, you know, more enjoyable. You're enjoying your work more because you see the finished product going and you, you have a person that is on the other end who says, hey, this is neat. I'm not going back and telling the salesperson at Walmart how neat something is, right? That's exactly true. That's exactly true.
when you involve pets, people love to send you photos of pets, and we're getting quite a little Pinterest following where people will actually give us photos and. Oh, that's wonderful. So you have to figure out all that stuff, right? <laughs> have the bowls in them sometimes they're just the dogs I, it doesn't matter right as long as they like it but that i mean i i just think it's wrong I, I that's why i think the internet is really bringing us all closer together than apart because boy everybody was trying to get big 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 and work for some big company and and and, and now people are dealing with a husband and wife making their bowls right at home and sending them off to you that's it. If, if you have a question, you're talking to the pair of us. That's right. it. <laughs> and what could be better than that? I mean, like, we use it. We have an apartment in Washington, D.C. Uh, on Airbnb, we would have put it. And people who use our apartment leave it cleaner than we give it to them. Yeah. yeah. In the hotel, you don't give a damn. You know, hi, they don't care. So you don't care. And, you know, all they want is the money and that's it. But now dealing with people like you, you know, on the internet, you're there, you're available, you're answering your business phone at home <laughs> during dinner or whatever. You're out. <laughs> you know, the guy at Walmart goes home and he's home, man. <laughs> We've actually had customers FaceTime as they're opening their packages. I mean, it's, it's just amazing how involved we end up. <laughs> And what could be better than that? You got one and one helping somebody. You're sharing what's inside of you and your heart and everything going into these products, and you're able to feel that coming back. Well, I sure hope so. Uh, I mean, that that's just what could be a better life? I mean, what are you going to pile up stacks of money or something and burn it or buy crap you don't need or whatever? <laughs> Or more toxic things. Yeah. Exactly, more toxic stuff. And here you're helping somebody with something and making their life more enjoyable and healthier than all the other crap that's in our life. Wow. So when are you applying for sainthood, sainthood or something? You know, are they going <laughs> to. I don't think we're there yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just a few more dog bowls, and maybe you get. Maybe in the maybe the animals have a saint. You know that they. <laughs> saint Francis. Right, Saint Francis. Yeah, I was giving a speech last night. And somebody said that. Oh, you're like Saint Francis of Assisi. And growing up Catholic, I sort of know what it means, but I got to look it up to make more sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's funny you mentioned that. Yeah, he was, I mean, pictures of him, follow, all the animals following him, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's what you guys are. So tell me how hard, what's the hard part of trying to sell on Amazon or on your own website or whatever? Well, that's a great question. I guess the hardest part is just to get people to know about you. And then once they do know about you, you have to explain to them why it's just not what they're used to. Our wood is never laminated, but people don't really know what laminated means. They know, they know there's a shiny coating on stuff, but they don't understand that that's bad for them. We have a, we started with probably more people buying us just because our products were beautiful, and now it's transitioned into Oh, really? The, I see. Yeah, it, it, that was the way we started is it was just really pretty, and now people are like, oh, there's a reason behind it. Uh, so you don't want to be just another pretty face, huh? <laughs> the eco-friendly side we're seeing increasing. Right. You know, just a few years ago when we first started, it, there was an awareness of it. But it, again, it was regional. Certain parts of the country, it was a, a heavier presence. But then other parts of the country, there was just no interest. I mean, we would... Mm -hmm we would be at shows various times and talk about something being eco-friendly or no chemicals and, and people just didn't right, really did care. You. Well, it no, I mean, so, something like that, it's sort of like, well, I'm going to sort my garbage or something if it's eco-friendly or something. <laughs> you know, the stuff in the air is actually killing you. <laughs> That's exactly yeah, but we are seeing more of a shift toward eco-friendly. And I think that's a lot of what Ingrid was referring to. Initially, people might look at a product and say, it's nice, I like the color, I like the style, I'm gonna buy it. Now we're seeing more reviews and getting more feedback from customers where they're saying, we bought it because friendly. It also looks nice, but it's eco -friendly. Well, you're starting a movement here, aren't you? Well, I hope to be part to. of it at we, least. Well, I mean, but you said that somebody did some research and they said that you're the only people in the world doing something like this. It. Yeah, That's with it. a complete friendly. It's interesting. You can go on Amazon or any website and find 
numerous, numerous products similar to what we do. Uh, uh, Dodgeball. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> and what eco-friendly means means something different to everybody. So, like, if you search on Amazon and you put in eco-friendly dog bowl, you're going to get a lot of people that have plastic, which is not really eco or it may have a lacquer on it, you know, but it's made of wood, so they're going on the wood part, or it's not sustainable. It comes in an eco-friendly eco -friendly package, right? <laughs> you take it out of the package and put it there, and your dog's going to die. <laughs> and that's one of the things when we initially set up, we wanted this to be complete and full circle, not right. just parts of this are eco-friendly, but, you know, we we do our best to make sure the whole package all the way from beginning to end, even shipping materials that we use, we use eco But I mean, I, your heart is in it because I mean, this is important to you. You both became ill because of this stuff that was in your house and the work that you were doing. So you had to give up your job because of all this stuff in the air and you created a new job helping yourself by helping other people. Right. That's exactly yeah. it. Wow. Well, that's terrific. Well, you're a great couple, and thanks for being in the world, teaching the rest of us <laughs> about all the junk in the air that we don't need. As long as we get, you know, products from ofto, O-F-T-O dot U-S, right? <laughs> and you see it all there. Well, Gary and Ingrid, thank you so much for being there and doing this work and putting your heart into it and helping the rest of us. Take care. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Now here's a mother and daughter who found out how to make money on the internet to afford doing the things that are so important in life. You know, I mean, that's what's so amazing to me. Now you could figure out how to get the money you need to do the most important things you want to do in the world. Yeah. And actually what was going on here when you watch this interview is this mother, the daughter just had a child, you know, and uh, she had a normal job and things like that. And the mother like came from, I think Ohio she was living in, came with their daughter to her daughter's house so they could start a business together at the daughter's home so the daughter didn't have to go to work every day and not be with the, with the grandchild. So they kept the family together like this by starting a store on the internet, on Etsy. And they figured all that out, it takes very little money, you know, to figure it out. And they, they, they had a clever idea that they really liked, cause it was around their baby, because the baby was getting wet all the time, and the baby blankets, and uh, how they, you know, they get soiled and whatever. So they, they made a baby blanket that's waterproof. It's waterproof on one side with a very soft material and the other side it's very soft material that's not waterproof. So it's neat. It's a waterproof blanket. So something you could take to the uh, ball game, you know, if it rains or lay on a wet grass or for picnics, but more importantly <laughs> for the babies that are leaking from one end or the other all the time. Yeah and they have this business growing out of it. And the motive was grandma, when she was re raising her daughter, like 20, 30 years ago or whatever, couldn't be at home and felt sorry that she couldn't stay at home with her daughter. So she's now that she's trying to solve that problem for the next generation by helping her daughter start a business at home and they're now co-partners of this business at home. So they're both with the new grandchildren <laughs> and all home with the family. See, that's something about the important things in life. And, and the internet allows you to do that, to pay for the important things in life instead of getting caught in some slave wage trade thing or whatever that you feel compelled to go to. Gosh, so watch this. Well, Carrie and Donna, is it? Yes. Donna and Deza is the last name, right? Carrie Deza, yes. Deza, not Deza, Deza, huh? Deza, yes. Okay, you say Deza, I said Deza. <laughs> <laughs> but what we want to know is more than that, is poppieslove.esty.com. And that's poppies, P-O-P-P-I-E-Z, love, L-O-V-E, dot esty, E-T-S-Y, dot com. Now we got everything. We got everything out of the way, so I'll talk to you later some other day. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just wonderful. So your mother and daughter team, you know, after your comedy act failed in the Catskills, you decided to do this, right? There you go. <laughs> we still try, though. <laughs> <laughs> but but you guys were so cute that you, you said, Mom, you came out to help her with this new business because you couldn't stay at home with your child, her, and the others you had. And so you're there helping her with the business so she could stay home with her children, right? Right, right. Yeah, I came out to be by the kids and, uh, you know, I've retired and now I got to do something. <laughs> right. So you must be a lot younger than me. So you could have 30 more years yet, right? Start a whole new career. Not that much younger. Yeah, there, right. you go. there you go. As an entrepreneur, what the heck? I mean, you at your age, I'm sure, Carrie, you're not thinking more than 30 years down the road, right? Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> so Donna, 30 years? Well, so you're in the same boat. That's how I feel. Yeah. And, and what you both learned before doesn't work now anyway. So you both have to learn something new. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It all changes all so fast. So yeah. everything changes. Yeah. What's neat, I bet, being with Carrie is that she's learning the new skills in our society, how to make money on the internet. Yeah. Exactly. And you are too, and you're both going up the learning curve together. So you probably wouldn't do it. You'd be afraid of doing it as much if she wasn't around, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We got, oh, that computer stuff or whatever. Oh, well, wow. I'm a retired IT, IT person. My goodness. <laughs> I'm a dinosaur in the IT. Understand. Punch cards, huh? Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, no, I have an MBA in computer science back in the 70s. Huh? There you go. <laughs> I don't know any of this stuff. So, I have to learn. That's why I got a 25-year-old in, in, in my home that helps me with all that. He's an IT guy. And he said, after five years out of college, he didn't know anything either. Oh, That's, yeah. yeah. I know. It's tough. <laughs> Both figuring out on the way. It's been about a year or two. You had the business and you saw the neatest thing I've ever heard. There's blankets that are waterproof, but they're cozy. It's not like a plastic blanket. So. <laughs> no, it's not plastic at all. It's no. awesome. Look at that. Is that what? So part of the one side is waterproof. Wow. Oh, I want a suit like that. Yes. <laughs> I want a polka dot suit. <laughs> I love polka dots. So one side is waterproof, the other is a soft fabric, but the, the, the waterproof is still a soft fabric too. It is. It's uh, it's called poly, polyurethane laminate or PUL, and it's what they make cloth diapers out of nowadays. So flexible, it's actually breathable, and um, you know you can wash and dry it. It's it's awesome. It's it's awesome. So the main the main uh, uh, market is really you know infants and young kids that puke and stuff comes out of their body all the time, right? It can be. It can be a, the starting place for them. And, and as you get older, um, we we sell a lot to adults. We started as a baby blanket, but the adults were saying, hey, I want one. And, um, well, but I mean, as you say in your literature, man, you take this to the ball game and you got a waterproof blankie. Yeah, absolutely. Everywhere. You can take it everywhere. But I like even better is going on a picnic with a damp, you know, grass or whatever. Oh, yeah. Right. We're up here in Portland and it rains in the morning and it's sunny in the afternoon and bam, dinner a la fresco at the park. Wow. And pets, too. You got a pet. You walk them in a blanket. You don't care what they do, right? Don't care. Nope. Yeah, they go wherever they want to go, right? <laughs> now, if we could all do that, that'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, all of you is a blanket. Yeah. So you started on Etsy, and now you're also on Amazon on the handmade part? We are. We're experimenting with them as they, uh, you know, try this this part of their... Uh... I mean, that's the growth of this industry, man. If Amazon's getting in it, you know, there's a lot of money in it, right? They're, they're, yes, I agree. Yeah. So. so when you first thought of the blankets, did you think online or what were you, or just that was the only thing ever you thought about? No, we went to a couple of stores locally first and then, and then we went online to expand. Carrying them or, or you got online because nobody would take them yet? No, they carried them and they, they, they did pretty well. Um, we got a lot of fe positive feedback, so we decided it was time to expand. Wow. Huh? Are you home sewers? My mom's an IT person. H how about you, Carrie? Are you a home sewer? What? I am. I'm. Well, now I am more. <laughs> I always, I, I in it, but um, now I definitely have perfected it. But I have a 
zoology degree, and I used to work uh, as a research assistant in a marine biology lab. Uh, in what kind of lab? For uh, marine biology. Oh, neat. No, yeah. home sewing. Well, we had a garment industry at home. We made baby clothes. Oh, great. Northeastern Pennsylvania. My both boys know how to sew. My one boy makes all his own clothes now, practically. Oh, that's great. Awesome. I sent him to cooking class, sewing class, or whatever. And I know how to do all that kind of stuff. So they're not helpless. <laughs> great. We need those now more than ever. Yeah. <laughs> so he has a sewing machine down there. He goes, you know, Burning Man at all? Oh, oh yeah, great. Right. He's a regular there and he's always making outfits for that. And all this guy. I went to Birdie Man once and nobody noticed me at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty thousand people like me. I'm wallpaper. <laughs> but you guys have building a career now for both of yourselves, right? Because and, and a way to be home with your children, right? That must the big thing. That was, that was the major thing. Other products besides blankets. So what else do you, what do you have on your store? We have um, waterproof burp cloths and changing pads that are a little bit more flexible and easy just to kind of roll up and throw in a bag or throw in the purse. And then um, you can also line the car seat with them too. So, or they're great as a lovey because they're still so soft. A lovey for a, a baby, you know, they could just, they could just, uh, you know, comfort that. Oh, I see. I love you. Right. Yes, yeah, some babies just like <clears throat> they're very sensual and they need you know the texture of this. They put everything in their mouth anyway, so that's <laughs> I finally grew out of that. Are the main point. So we really well, that's wonderful. Well, it's a delight to talk to you guys and, and you're bringing your family together. You're going to raise the next generation better, right, mom? <laughs> because you're at home <laughs> and you're improving the economy because you're creating jobs for yourself. You're you're creating products that are from your heart and sharing them with everybody in the world. Now you could do this. We are. We are. We really love to make custom orders for people because they just have these, you know, desires and these thoughts and these, and we so just... So do I. See, that's why I get suits made. Because, man, I... <laughs> My vision, yes. Absolutely. It makes more fun in life. Than the... now, and that's what coming to our side. It's people like you, independent entrepreneurs and craftsmen. Really, you're all craftsmen doing this for individual and cutting out all the middlemen so you can keep all the money, too. That's <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> Don't have to share it with these fat cats in the middle. So we find you at Puppies Love, P-O-P-P-I-E-Z-L-O-V-E dot S-D-E-T-S-Y dot com and you find these ladies there making these wonderful blankies absolutely yes, yes. come hit us up come find come us. us oh there it is i want the polka dot the polka dot where's the polka dot, polka dot. <laughs> there it is ah polka dot my neck suits is polka dots thank you guys take care thank you